So today I want to show you a few ideas how you can create more complex, more interesting envelope signals. All of the ideas we will have a look at today and many, many more are uh, available in my patching techniques and ideas document that I continue updating. Uh, there are lots and lots of um, patching ideas there. If you're interested, uh, links in the description. I will just quickly mention a shape master for mind meld. If you know what you want, if you have a shape that you know that you want, um, go for this module and uh, there is a free version there is a paid version but basically you can do all sorts of different things with it create all sorts of different crazy and unique modulation shapes that you can use for all sorts of things so again if you are uh, looking for something um that you can shape your own uh, sound uh, go for shape master today we will have a look at a few more experimental uh, ideas and techniques Right, so here I have a voice. I have two bleak oscillators being modulated by oct. This is going or being mixed into a filter. And in this case, I'm using an ADSR envelope to open the VCA and the filter. For this example, I'm using my MIDI controller. It will sound like this. Right, this is how it sounds like um, with a normal ADSR envelope. Here I have exactly the same voice, just for now I'm not using an envelope. And the first thing we will look at is how you can create an envelope. And with using a sequencer, I always say voltage is voltage is voltage. And envelope signal is basically voltage going up and down in different stages. With a sequencer, you can set it exactly for different steps, for different stages. You can have the voltage go up and down. An envelope is not necessarily a dedicated module. It's a signal you can use to envelope voices if you use it with a VCA or to modulate all sorts of uh, different things. So in this case, in this example, we will use a sequencer for this. All right, so I'm going to run the sequencer with a clock. In this case, it's a multiplied by four clock. All right, you can see it's already running and it's going to a scope. So if, for example, I say I want step three to go up, step four to uh, stay in the same level so the sound will sustain, right, then it will go down again. This stage will be a bit lower. Then it will go completely down. Right, and then it will go up again a bit, gradually, right, until it reaches again another peak, and it will sustain there a bit, and then it will go down until it reaches again the lowest section. Right, so basically now we have voltage going up and down, right? Now there are two things to keep in mind here um, for making this an envelope. I find it better that the uh, um, voltage is not so rigid, so it's not going up directly and down directly, because if you use it for something like a VCA, you will get clicks. We will see this in a second. And also now we have a cycling um, sequencer, basically. I want to use my MIDI keyboard again. I want to gate the sound or to gate this envelope. So there are a few things we can do. First of all, let's connect this signal to the VCA and have a listen to the sound you will see. You can hear those clicks. Right, so first of all, what we, what we can do, we can use a slew limiter to smoothen this signal a bit. Here I have a process, a new module from VCV, and it has built-in slew. Right, so if I send this signal first through process and then form the slew output back to the VCA, you can see this here on the scope. Now I can smoothen this signal a bit, make it less rigid. Right, so now we have something more similar to an envelope and we got rid of those clicks. And another thing we can do, we can turn this sequencer into a one-shot sequence. So when I gate it, it will run once and will stop. Now this sequencer has this built-in, it's called one-shot mode. There is forward one-shot, backward one-shot and so on. As soon as you trigger the reset, it will start another cycle and then will stop. There are other ways to create one-shot sequences. Again, I have a few ideas of how to do this in this document. Um, again, links in the description. Um, but in this case, we will use this sequencer that has this one-shot mode, right? So I can connect the gate output for my MIDI controller to the reset, and now every time I hit a note, this envelope will start running and we will get our sound. Right, 
right, let's connect this envelope also to the filter. Right, so we get an envelope a bit more interesting, a bit more complex. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up again. Um, it's not just a normal ADSR. Right, and what you can do, you don't have to use um, just a slower clock or relatively slow. Right here, it's divided by, uh, it's uh, multiplied by four. I can also make it multiplied by eight, so it's double speed. <laughs> Right, maybe take the slow a bit down. Right, we can also change the number of steps. So for example, I can have just 12 steps. Now you have to make sure that the last step is not high because then it will just sustain there. Right. So let's make it a bit more interesting, something like this. Right, so we get a bit more of an interesting, um, an interesting envelope. Again, an envelope is not necessarily a module that you have to use, an envelope generator. Envelope is a signal that you can use in all sorts of different ways. And in this case, you have something a bit more complex. I have here another example with a sequencer. In this case, I have noise coming from noise plethora going through some delay, and I have the sec3 as an envelope. Right, and in this case, to create a sort of a one-shot sequence or to give it sorts of rests, I'm triggering the run function. Right, so every now and then, according to a clock division that I'm using here, it's divided by five. The sequencer will stop and then will start again. Also here I'm using slew, right, to make this a bit more smooth and it will sound like this. Another example here, I have a bass with psych going through the IO47, also from Instruo, the filter, right, and also here I'm using the sec3 as an envelope. Right, so you get this interesting shape going up, going down. Here I have an FM operator. Again, also here I'm using the SEC3 as an envelope. And I have random notes. Right, and now I can play this uh, voice that we created before also. So here I have another example, I have the phrase sequencer from Impromptu, sequencing another voice. Also here I have two bleak oscillators with some modulation from Oct. I'm also mixing in this case um, a bit of noise with noise plethora. Again, filter, chorus, and the VC8 it will sound like this. Right, and now in this case, to create a bit more of a complex envelope, we will use LFOs. Basically, you can see here I have three LFOs. They are all running at different frequencies. They are outputting uh, once a sine and two triangle waves. I'm mixing them, and you can see the result here on the scope. And this we will use to create our complex envelope. Again, voltage is voltage is voltage. You don't have to use an envelope generator to create envelopes. You can create uh, envelopes with all sorts of different um, uh, things and modules and ideas. Right, so again, in this case, we will use LFOs. Now, there are two things to consider here. First of all, if you want something more repetitive, what you can do. And also here, LFOs will basically oscillate. They will cycle. And we want something that we can gate, that we can start and stop. Right, so there are two things we can do. First of all, we can use or utilize the reset inputs on the LFOs. 
whenever you will trigger the reset or whenever the reset is triggered the LFOs will uh, jump to their starting point and will start again all over right so this can help you create something a bit more repetitive so if I bring in this voice again and now I will use the LFOs to control the VCA right you can hear the movement And this is another thing to consider most VCAs um, or some VCAs or most VCAs never mind will start working from zero and upwards so they will work with unipolar signals so at least voltage controlled attenuators um, with unipolar signals so if you use LFOs make sure to have them or most of them as unipolar right or the at least the resulting signal as a unipolar signal so you can open the VCA and it will not just close it Right, so now we have this cycling uh, signal. So first of all, what we can do to create something more repetitive is with each gate of the phrase sequence, so with each change of note, we can restart or reset the LFOs just by connecting the gate to the reset input. You can hear the clicks, they will disappear in a second, but listen to the repetitive movement now. Right, there is repetition here and now in order to get them also coming in and out we can use another VCA and another envelope so if I send this result this LFOs first through another VCA again a VCA is a great module to control amplitude of signals right and from the VCA it will go to our VCA of the voice and now I can use an envelope to bring in these LFOs, right? So again, the LFOs go through another VCA, which is controlled by a normal uh, envelope, an ADSR envelope, that will also be gated with the same gates from the sequencer. Right, we can also change the settings here a bit, maybe a bit less sustain. Right, and now we get something a bit more envelope-like, but again, it's very complex or more complex. I will use the same envelope also for the filter. Right, so now instead of having just an ADSR, right, goes up, sustains and goes down, we have something more complex. It goes up, it goes down, it's still repetitive and it's still being gated from the sequencer. Again, mixing LFOs, I have here a few more voices, I have some drums sequenced by the gate sequencer also from Impromptu. Tremor 2 as a bass drum and hi-hats and Tremor 1 as a snare. Right, and I believe it was in the previous video where I used gates um, for sound design for adding crunch to your sound. So this is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm mixing the drums, they are going through gates, then some uh, EQ, just uh, boosting a few of the signals, a few of the frequencies, and then through Chrono Blob 2 for some glitch. It's being frozen, delay times are changing, right? So it's more of a glitchy sound. And I have here another sequence, I have the SEC3 sequencing energy from the geodesics and also here I have three LFOs again running at different frequencies with different wave shapes being mixed. This is the result, the result here on the scope, right? And this is bringing in this voice, again I'm gating it with another envelope in VCA just like I showed you now, it will sound like this.
another thing you can experiment with uh, for creating complex envelopes is basically combining mixing different envelope generators or better yet function generators because function generators just have to be triggered and they start running and um, if you need some help if you are not so familiar with um, ADSRs with function generators LFOs VCAs mixers and so on I have a series of videos all about the basics of modular synthesis or synthesis in the modular environment with VCV2 uh, where I go through everything, sequencing, modulation, uh, shift registers, VCAs, uh, oscillators and oscillations, LFOs, um, so everything uh, to get you started, so if you're interested, um, links in the description. So anyway, here I have four or uh, three modules actually that are also available in hardware. I have Rampage from Befaco, and uh, this will work perfectly also with Maths, if you have from Make Noise, um, Size from Instruo, and another uh, ADSR also from Befaco. Um, all of them are also um, working with triggers, so that you need to trigger them once and they start running. Right, and what I'm doing here, I'm using again my MIDI controller to start or to play the sound. The sound itself is just the FM operator with a nice reverb, of course. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm using the gate for my MIDI controller to trigger the first function, right, it will do its thing, a quick attack or a rise and it will decay, and then when it's finished, when it reaches is its end, it will trigger the second function, which will again do its thing, and then it will trigger size, right, and size as also an attack output, gate output, that will trigger directly the ADSR from Befaco, and then I'm mixing, and you will see the result here on the scope, right, so we have a sort of a chain of uh, envelopes or functions that will go up, will go down, will go up again, and so on, creating something a bit more complex, and it will sound like this. Right? Right, so you can see the shape, you can hear how the sound goes up and down, it's not your normal ADSR, it's something a bit more interesting, a bit more organic, with more movement, um, right, so this is also something we can explore, this I'm sending through a delay, just for fun, right, it will sound like this now. Right, very nice, and I have a few more voices here just for texture, I have the sec3 sequencing kick all as a bass, and there is also a delay involved, of course all of the patches will be available uh, to download in the description. And I also have here a Euclidean sequencer pinging two filters, um, right again just creating another interesting percussive sound. One is going through the fusion delay from Erica Sins, one is going through the tap dancer from Flag. I will unmute this. Right, just to create a nice atmosphere, a nice texture here. Um, and that was it, I hope this was helpful. Again, all of these ideas and many, many more in the document that I continue updating, links in the description. I'm going to play this a bit. Thank you for watching and cheers.